Welcome to a new episode of Ride Along, where I talk to young entrepreneurs, professionals, and innovators who are doing amazing things. Today, we're going to meet Maxima and Cementa, who is the CEO of Libera Cosmetics. She's a young lady doing amazing things, growing her product, growing her brand. She has crazy ideas for the future. So come along, let's meet her and see what she's up to and learn how can we grow our product, how can we grow our brand. It's a mentor and uh, she's the CEO of Libara Cosmetics, which is a um, cosmetics line that does, um, I think you deal more with shea butter products. We but manufacture natural and organic cosmetics based on shea butter. Yeah. From hair to skin to men's beards to, she does for kids, for adults, natural hair, lipstick. You can tell us how you kind of started it all. Okay, so um, from high school, I used to be interested in making people up. I really enjoy makeup. Mm. But then I've always been one of those people that want to own the makeup that I used to make people up. Yeah. Uh, at that time, uh, I used to be the one to tweeze eyebrows, you know, in secondary schools, when they're so sh I'm the one to do the whole beautification processes, mm. which I found very interesting. Mm. However, um, I couldn't study this because African parents, well, I can't tell my parents that I'm going to study cosmetology in whose house, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I decided to pursue what I was requested to pursue. That was in electrical engineering at Makere. I graduated with a first class mm -hmm. degree. I was part of that uh, the team that builds the first electrical car mm -hmm. here in Uganda, the, the Kira, Kira EV, EV. Yeah. the original team that actually conceptualized the car. Mm -hmm. Then I joined the oil and gas industry, uh, where I first worked with Total EMP here in Uganda for seven months. Then after that, I worked with Shlambaje. It's the world's biggest oil and gas service company. Yeah. As I was working, that's when I got to tour around and see you know, how the world is behaving. Mm -hmm. And I realized that natural cosmetics was a big deal. But the products that were selling the most were those from Africa with African ingredients. Mm -hmm. You know, like say you have this product by this international brand that has coconut oil from Mombasa or shea butter from Ghana and then on researching about these countries they were doing nothing yeah. with the ingredients so mm. that's when I decided to come back home mm. and uh, do my cosmetics brand eventually mm. using ingredients from Uganda and an ingredient that was specific to Uganda and was also beautiful world over so yeah. Uganda has the best shea butter it has the highest percentage of healing properties in comparison to shea butter elsewhere mm. and it's naturally here yeah, that's when I decided to come back and focus on this so I started saving mm. for one and a half years extra so, yeah. when I got my you know my minimum that I wanted quit come back and started here so now in a more like technical and detailed way yeah like you know you've decided I want to start this company yes like i'm sure that people who are watching who are like even my like, cover company wants to start but mm -hmm. how do you like really start like as in how do you even know how to write a business plan how much money you need like where you going to get suppliers from like technically speaking how did you actually start start as an engineer before starting a project you have to literally know about what you're going to do yeah so what i had to do i had to research about shea butter in the world the market prospective prospects out there the cost of the shea butter the price that it's sold at on the general market i had to look into the supply chain here in uganda do we actually have sustainable supply of shea butter after getting reports and studies that we have enough quantity and something that is sustainable that's when uh, I decided to compile a clear business plan how to write a business plan well I googled because I didn't really know how to write a business plan but I know that a business plan helps to guide a business in growth strategy and generally making someone aware of their growth mm. anticipated growth I came up with my own business plan then after Based on the business plan, I knew that we had to have a manufacturing center. But at the time, I didn't have enough money to handle having my own specific manufacturing place. I started discussing with my grandmother about how to manufacture in Uganda, how to start up, especially as a young company. That's when she introduced me to the Uganda Industrial Research Institute. I went and visited the institute. She actually took me around. Mm. These guys help develop young companies with plans 
and grow them to a level whereby they are market ready and then let them go mm. through an incubation program. And Head, that's for like anyone who is an for anyone. entrepreneur or investor. Yes. For as long as you have a sustainable business plan okay. and you're sure of your growth pattern. They help you come up with products, develop them, add value to them, and then make them market ready. Then it's upon you to actually push your products on the market. Mm -hmm. But for them, they guide you systematically on how to get there. Yeah, so I met with uh, Professor Kwetsiga, the head of URI, discussed with him my business plan. He called me quite an ambitious young lady. <laughs> he even mentioned that you bright girls will always have plans, come here, develop, and then you get discouraged and go back to work. Okay. I had to tell him that I'm going to prove him wrong. Now been three years down the road and he is really proud of what we are doing and the progress. So my business plan matched my savings and uh, with Yuri, after looking around, I knew I had the technical expertise. I don't believe in cooking things up from home because you can go wrong several times, especially if you're not technically When you, when you say everything. cooking up things, it means coming back developing your products in your kitchen like yes i am not I'm when you not, don't have that technical thank uh, you training yeah yeah I, I, and these are products that are very sensitive mm. you know people's skin people's hair i'm doing makeup if i don't have the technical know-how of how to make such products there's a big chance mm. that i may make products that have mold in them oh or products that react with someone's skin mm. you know i don't People went to school for four years to study how to make these things. So with Yuri providing that, I was sure that at least I had my kitchen set up. Yeah. And all I wanted was the first sale. Because, you know, with one person investing in your business, I believe in this world of 7 billion people, there should be at least 1 million more who can invest in your business. You get Shia Bata. Yes. From Uganda. Yes. And you said that many people who people are not doing anything here with Shia Bata, what more are you doing apart from because we once talked about what you're doing with the community mm -hmm. that you get the share butter from so maybe you can just discuss that like how much value are you adding to the community where you're getting the share butter from okay uh it's not that people are not doing much mm -hmm. of recent people have started adding some value but it's not to the extent it's not the best it's not the most we're not exploiting the share butter mm -hmm. the majority simply get the shea butter and sell it or mix it with other oils and sell it mm -hmm. they don't go a, a further a step further to make lipsticks uh, makeup and other things mm -hmm. so um the difference between us and other people um when i was working abroad i realized that the company i was working for was not adding extra value to the nationals of the country as much as i expected them to mm -hmm. So I decided that whatever that I'm doing here, I have to leave a mark or I have to leave a place developed. So also in the business planning, I had to come up with at least 2,000 farmers, uh, structure them according to villages mm. and uh, work with their local leaders in order to be sure that if I come to this one village, I will get a hundred bags of sheer nuts. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure of them because I know who I'm getting one bag from, five bags from, three bags from. So that's the system that I did. And then in the process to encourage people, because it's not all about just buying nuts from them, how do you create a sustainable supply? Um, and also how do you leave a mark here in Uganda? I decided to start educating a few people from the different villages so we get the children some children right now we have a, we have bursaries for seven people mm -hmm. in uh, Soroti region greater Soroti region that's Achoa, Amuria and Katakui mm -hmm. we take them to um, Soroti Christian school mm -hmm. it's in Soroti where they study in boarding school mm -hmm. so I believe that these young people from these villages better understand the plants because they've naturally grown up with them in mm. the area and it is the same people that we, we hope to uh, educate so that 20 years down the road they will come back or 10 years 15 years down the road they will come back and lead the company to greater heights because mm. they understand the best that we use so I want to talk about the challenges you faced one when you were starting the company mm -hmm. challenges in terms of finding the support challenges in terms of 
the climate, economic climate in Uganda, or just even working with your the people who are giving you the share, or who you're buying the share butter from. Like. The challenges in an economy will always be there. Mm -hmm. But my biggest challenge thus far has been convincing the Ugandan market that we are producing something good Quality. here yeah. locally. Yes. So we I've done my best to put in the research, to put in the you know the quality measures that we can put in based on ISO international standards, right? I've done my best to package the products as beautifully as we can. Mm -hmm. But co because we are making products from here in Uganda, the majority of the Ugandans will not want to associate with us because we are local. Yeah. So there's this mentality that things from abroad are much better than things made here in Uganda. Yeah. That's the, the mindset of the people has been the biggest and toughest challenge mm -hmm. for me. Then the other thing is that we have some uh, materials, some raw ingredients, raw materials that we use as ingredients that are not available here in Uganda. And since we produce our products to be natural and organic, mm -hmm. we have to be very keen on say the preservatives that we use. There's some that are so not we don't available here. We don't produce natural preservatives. No, the majority of people here use methylparaben and other parabens for preserva preservation of products. Oh, yeah. Or other chemicals that are and available. Most, most and products abroad, everything is now paraben free, paraben free. Yes. And as we're still using it. Yes. Oh then the other thing also is that uh, we have a limited, uh, limited sample space of preservatives. Mm -hmm. So you find like uh, some preservatives that we have here say don't react well with salicylic acid that we use in our cleanser or you know different ingredients that we prefer to use so we have to import these from abroad mm. then on importing the products they are very expensive we have high taxes and this taxing people the URA does not really favor us uh, small income you know small to medium sized companies yeah. in what we are doing so we have to pay the heavy taxes then the other bit uh, because I want to position myself to be an international company systemizing each and everything that we do mm. has also been another challenge it's difficult to work with people who do not have the system mindset so getting my employees into that whole what mindset do they have now do everything as you can you know lazily you don't have to report what you do you can follow up later but having a reporting system maintaining quality like for example we have to uh, do away with batches that don't meet our standards yeah even if it's a small slight change of scent mm -hmm. we literally have to do away with it yeah if it's a color change we have to do away with it yeah yes. what about your supply is there any challenge in getting your shea butter because we grow up shea yeah. butter for the natural, natural oils that we have here mm -hmm. there is absolutely no challenge mm -hmm. for that it's uh, for example the packaging material would also be another challenge we don't make very good packaging material here locally yeah. so we are forced to import it right from Nairobi what is what has been your kind of expansion growth because when you started out you had your one store and oh, now no, sweetheart when we started out I was selling things in a boot of my car <laughs> like <laughs> please don't okay. joke what how has been the ex what, first of all what has been the expansion like history but do you have like some kind of model you follow? Yes. So uh, the dream is to have 6,000 stores across the world. So from June 2015 to November 2016, mm -hmm. I was selling products from the boot of my car. People would call for orders mm -hmm. through Facebook. I would go and deliver the orders yeah. as and when required. Yeah. We had our first store in December 2016. So prior to that, we were making about 3 million shillings, 2 million shillings, so really been, 2 or 4 oh, million shillings. Who are your yes. friends on Facebook who are buying your things? Only. Yeah. So we were not making as much money. But when we opened the shop, despite our economy being on the low at the time, mm. we were able to make 11 million shillings in our first month of sale. Oh, wow. And from December 2016 up to today, mm. we've risen to making about 70 million per 
in sales a month, which is per something. Month. Yeah. So by the end of last year, what was your profit like? Our profit margin was good, mm -hmm. but I won't say exactly because you are might come in touch with us. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you pay your taxes. <laughs> no, we are tax compliant. That's for sure. But we are, we are doing quite well because our first shop in Chisement is one that has been able to open up these other two shops. Yeah. And it's the one that is pushing us further to open up is extra so you have a shop in to do now. you have a shop in um, on Kampala Boulevard. On Kampala Boulevard and you have the shop and salon in Tinder. in Tinder but you told me that the shop in Boulevard is a franchise yes how how did that even come about like so uh, by June last year I wanted to have opened up another shop before the year closed mm. and I didn't know how I was going to open it up I was looking around for spaces but I didn't have the manpower to open that up at the time. Mm. So I'm a very prayerful girl. I believe in prayer and fasting. <laughs> so as I was praying and you know, continuing with my little adverts on Facebook here and there, a lady approached us and she said she wanted to open up a liver shop. From Facebook? From Facebook. Uh -huh. So I asked her, are you serious? She said, yes, can I meet with you? So I met with her. Then I told her to pay me $5,000 or else I won't open it up. As a test, mm. please. She did. That's how we started franchising. <laughs> Before that, I wasn't, I don't know, I didn't know about the franchise model, mm. and I didn't know it, if it would work here. Mm. But then after she agreed to do that, and she's now running a profitable it's business of profitable. her own. And you would think it's yours. Yes, and yeah. she's not even there most of the time. We literally help her run it. Yeah. She's working, and she's earning from her side. Do you earn by helping her run it? What, how do you earn apart from her buying the product and selling it? We earn by making sure that we have sales. Okay. That's the way we earn. So if she doesn't sell, we don't, don't work. So that's kind of like yes. the agreement you had. Thank you. So and you sell it, to her like at a, a smaller percentage and then yes, she do. earns a profit. Okay. Yes. And when we're advertising, we obviously have to advertise our presence at the shop because it's a Livara shop. You have your branches only in Uganda right now. Yes. But you moment. have plans for elsewhere. Where else are you looking at? South Africa and Nigeria. And these are things that you're already planning. They're Those already are talks. things that are in, that are underway. Yes. In South Africa, which city is that? We'll start with Johannesburg, and, and then they will manage their growth according to. Will their it be plan. a franchise, or it will be you owning it? It will be a franchise. And then in Nigeria, which city? Same thing. We shall start with uh, Lagos. It mm. will be a franchise, 50-50. Mm. They will run their show. And, and you yeah. just supply and yes and add. Okay, that's a, what has been the role apart from you getting your franchise business, but the role of social media. Like, how have you used social media or has social media? The gentleman promoted? from South Africa saw us on Facebook. And on Facebook, Facebook, the, so, so they're putting statuses promote your business on Facebook. You know, <laughs> the Nigerian person was my former boss, uh, 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 Slambaje. But he was still following us on social media yeah and he noticed that we had grown so he said he just suggested if we can take the franchise to nigeria we gave him our guidelines mm. and he's working on them but after following us on facebook on facebook so now have you has that become like a marketing tag, uh, strategy for you like you that has really been our social main media? and only marketing you haven't used output. any other marketing nope. strategy apart not from yet. social media not yet I haven't paid for TV, I haven't paid for radio. So for the television and radio mm. or newspapers, you find that they like the story mm. that I have. Mm. So they approach me to write about me and inadvertently advertise for me at zero cost. I don't have to do any other form of capital building apart from your initial investment. Like have you got other investors to boost your business or has it is it still running on that initial investment? Uh, we are growing the business. We are planning on releasing uh, uh, products for the lower end market. Still same quality and all. But in order for me to achieve that, I will need much more than I had before. Mm. So we have gotten an investor mm. who partnered with us. We sold him shares. So he gave us uh, half a billion shillings. And then uh, we're also making ourselves credit worthy to get cheap loans cheap from loans. the government mm. to be able to to sustain the growth. Because I mean, I would I won't be able to grow to the level that I want to grow at with just fifty thousand dollars. So right now, saving. your majority shareholder. Yes, my sister Gloria, who is a medical doctor, mm. 
is my second was my second shareholder mm -hmm. and then this new investor is the third is that something you want to go like we don't want shareholding more. no this or is the last share open a board with our growth we yeah. have a board of directors okay uh board of directors don't necessarily have to be shareholders how do so. you choose your board members uh, they have to have something I yearn to have in life mm. and something they also have to be quite um, good at what they do mm. in in life for example I want to be I want the company to have very good social media presence so I want to have someone who's good at social media marketing mm. who understands social media really well mm. and who has grown their brand what something that you want someone who is a young entrepreneur and is, is watching this mm -hmm. wherever they are in the world or in Africa in, or in Uganda mm -hmm. and they, they kind of want to, to start they have this big idea what are some few words you like some words of advice you give them do something you like mm -hmm. because if you don't like something you will you will not enjoy it I quit my 30 million shillings job not mm -hmm. because it wasn't paying me well but because I was not happy doing it as happy as I should have been my current job right now doesn't pay me as much as I was earning before yet but I'm happy doing it and I'm seeing growth then um, safe don't rely on people's money to get that first step uh, to get across the first step and Save you know, if you can't invest money. in yourself no I'm going to invest in thank you, you. Mm -hmm. if you can't yeah thank you you have to save and you know, use the sweat your own sweat to develop yourself at least take the first jump with money that you have saved and money will never be enough by the way but at least you have something to start now after you have started then you will be credit worthy for banks and grants and other institutions that dish out money so it's always important to start with money that you have actually earned yourself um, the other thing is pray rely on a power that is beyond yourself not that juju bit mm -hmm. but like god allah whichever way you look at it mm. pray and have that faith. have your god mm. have faith because there's some points you reach and the earth can put you down it's only god that you can rely on to see you through a period so pray and pray and pray and don't cease praying pray until something happens or pray forever mm. yeah never forget your god because he will never forget you mm. uh don't be corrupt be open be transparent corruption will bring you nothing but disaster uh transparency pays a lot i've had people who want to invest with me simply because we are transparent in how we do things so transparency helps a lot and then use social media that's the last thing don't, don't use, use social, social media, media to show your boobs or whatever it is <laughs> unless you're selling bras but <laughs> use the cheapest avenues an instagram there. model <laughs> you know be an instagram entrepreneur yes and so we have learned a lot about how to make a company work how to have a dream how to write a business plan how to invest in your in your company and also that when you invest in yourself people are willing to invest in you but also to get up and do something that you love and not something that necessarily you were trained to do as the founder of Mary Kay Cosmetics said Mary Kay Ash there are three types of people in this world those who make things happen those who watch things happen and those who ask what happened so what type of person are you today thank you for watching please remember to subscribe share and like this video and let's grow this YouTube channel. Thank you.